Okay. Oh my god, there's a lot of money on this table. By a lot, I mean a lot. Um, two lenses I did not bring out here because this table is already full. These, by the way, are the lenses top recommendation for a DX uh, crop sensor camera and for the Nikon D500 specifically, but DX uh, camera in general. Um, some of these are overlap, like some of these telephoto lenses. Two lenses I did not bring out here, and they could, but, you know, God, how many lenses do I have to grab? Is the uh, Voigtlander 58mm f1.4, the Nocton. Uh, the lens is unbelievable. It's a perfect uh, portraiture lens. It's silk, sex, and sugar. It's the absolute pinnacle of perfection and quality. Uh, the lens is actually priced way too cheap, and it's always sold out, and everybody that bought it off my recommendation is just insanely happy about it, so that's one lens. The other one is the uh, Tamron 70-200 to f2.8. That lens is $1,500. I use it all the time, full frame, crop sensor, doesn't matter either way. It is perfect on either camera. Now there are only four true DX lenses that I could recommend. Only four. Nikon does not make that many DX lenses in general. Um, but there are only four that I could ever recommend. The other ones, to hell with them. It's like, what about, no, no. It's like, well, what about this, no. Only these four. 17 to 55, 2.8. You can get that lens new, it's very expensive, $1,500. You can get them used all day long for 600 bucks. That lens has been around for quite some time. The lens is spectacular. It does not have vibration reduction. But it is an incredible fast lens. And uh, even uh, on full frame uh, sensor cameras, uh, on full frame mode, the vignetting, uh, not in crop mode, the vignetting is not that bad from f4 and up. Um, so, secondly, this is a uh, incredibly cheap uh, prime lens, equivalent 35mm basically, so 35mm f1.8. It's a, a G-Series Nikkor. It is made in China. It is very, very cheap. You can find them all day long for like 130 40 bucks on eBay. New, they're $200. It's a 35mm f1.8 G Prime. Incredibly sharp lens. It's a DX uh, sensor lens also. Most fun lens in the world. Most fun you could have with your pants on, or uh, at least not get arrested. Uh, it's <laughs> a 10.5mm DX sensor, uh, DX uh, lens, excuse me, a fisheye. Uh, it's a fisheye lens. It works perfectly. This is also the best value fisheye. Perfect for full frame also use in DX uh, crop mode. This is a DX uh, crop sensor uh, fisheye lens, 10.5 millimeter. You usually grab these for 330 bucks. You've got 180 degrees of uh, view. You even have over 200 if you uh, cut the, uh, the pedals off the front of it like I did here, but I made another video about that. The only other DX crop sensor lens would be this. And they make a 10 to 24. It's like, well, what about the 10 to 24? No. This is it. The 12 to 24 DX crop sensor lens. Uh, this is a Nikon's a Japanese made lens. The 10 to 24 is a bit wider and it's made in China. It's inferior build quality. And also from 10 to 12, you think, well, you know, I'd rather have the 10 to 24 instead of the 12 to 24. No, you don't, because from 10 to, 12, uh, 10 to 12 on that other lens is no bueno. So this is the one. And it's not cheap. I mean, even used, these are about 480 bucks. So this is a 12 to 24 uh, Nikkor crop lens. So that's the crop lenses. The one lens that I will state uh, flat out that you're just a stinking idiot and a moron if you don't own it. And uh, it's perfect for full frame, but it's uh, even more perfect still. For DX uh, crop sensor camera is the 60mm 2.8 D series. Doesn't have to be D, it could be a pre D. What's the difference between a D and a pre D? Nothing. The only thing the D does is it sends some uh, nonsense uh, distance calculations to the camera for calculating flash compensation. So it's the same damn thing. It looks exactly the same as this. Now, a lot of these are pre D that you'll find on eBay from Japan. $180, $200. Like I said, you're an idiot if you don't buy this lens. This lens is that good. Why is it so good? Perfect portraiture lens on DX. It is insanely sharp. Color saturation, uh, image uh, rendition is incredible. It's a perfect uh, macro lens. It's uh, although it's not the longest macro lens in the world, it's still really, really good for macro. It's a great normal lens. Well, it's a 90 millimeter equivalent on a DX crop sensor. To me, it's it's still a normal lens. Perfect reproduction lens. So it does repro, macro, portraiture. It's all around. You know, if you had to glue one lens to your camera forever and ever, this would probably be it. Um, 
This lens is not cheap as the full frame lens, but this is an equivalent of 35mm on a DX crop sensor camera. This is a 24mm 1.8G Nikkor. It's a full frame lens, but it's a perfect 35mm lens equivalent on a DX crop lens. This lens is not cheap. I'm looking at $800 for this lens. It just came out last year, by the way. Another lens that's absolutely incredible. It's dreamy. It's creamy. It's like... Uh, cream and butter and uh, fluffy uh, bunny rabbit tails uh, as far as the image that it produces you can check out the Flickr page for it if you want the Tamron 45mm 1.8 it uh, has vibration reduction it uh, is not the fastest autofocus in the world but uh, it's not bad it's not meant for sports action but it is perfect for everything else portraiture I chose the 45 over the 35 it's a personal choice you're uh, basically looking at uh, you know, 68 millimeters equivalent on a DX crop sensor. This is a full frame lens. 68, basically, let's say 70 millimeters. It's still a perfect portrait uh, focal on a DX crop sensor by right, camera. This lens is incredible. I love it. The output is what is incredible, not the fact that the autofocus isn't the fastest in the world. Then I got three different lenses here. The other one I didn't bring out, the 70 to 200 Tamron. The best value is $300 used all day long. It's the seven. Now there are many versions. You have to pay attention. There are many versions of the 70 to 300. Nikon has made a lot of different 70 to 300s over the years. This is the 70 to 300 VRG. Okay, only that lens. This one's uh, 300, 330 dollars used all day long, and it's perfect on your DX crop sensor camera. This is a full frame sensor uh, lens, still perfect on crop. I just got done making a video, you know, all this nonsense about people saying, well, you know, it's a full-frame lens, should I use it on a DX? No, there's no issue. You know, professional birders and people out there using time, all the professional, all of these, you'll notice that the lenses that are used on DX crop sensors for the fact of uh, photo sight and pixel pitch advantage are all full-frame lenses, and these are what professionals use on DX crop bodies since they crop the hell out of their shots, as I said in the prior video. That's why there is a distinct, awesome advantage of using full-frame lenses on DX crop sensors. Okay, and here we go, the 300mm AFS, this is a constant f4, incredible lens, absolutely love the hell out of it. There is no uh, vibration reduction on this lens, this is a perfect little birding lens, it's incredibly fast, it has a true silent wave motor in it instead of a micro motor. I'm not going to grab for it because it's too big and heavy, but I've been using this quite a lot on my D500. Yeah, which is exactly what it's, but even though it's a full frame lens, this is exactly what it is best on. That doesn't make any sense. See, that confuses some people. Say, well, how this is a full frame lens, why the hell is it best on a DX uh, crop sensor camera? Well, as I've already explained, the pixel pitch on this, if we're scaled up, would be 47 megapixel camera. Even though it's only a 20.8 DX crop sensor camera, there are a lot more little dots of information per square millimeter sensor. When you're shooting birds and bunny rabbits at a thousand yards or whatever, you're going to crop the hell out of the shot. The best full frame camera in the world, doesn't matter if it's Nikon or Canon, has big old eyeballs on those sensors. And if you crop the hell out of the shot, that means there's not as much information per square millimeter of sensor. That is why these full frame lenses like this are better to stick on a DX crop sensor body because 99 times out of 100, you're cropping the hell out of the shot. And you have more information for more detail saved on the DX body than you do on the full frame. See, DX uh, sensor cameras actually do have an advantage over a full frame. Full frame itself has several advantages over DX crop sensors, although those advantages are not as radical as you would think. But they are distinct advantages, which is what makes them best for portraiture and landscape. Um, but anyway, these are the best lenses uh, for your Nikon D500 or D7100 or, uh, you know, whatever crop sensor you get, or especially for the Nikon D500. Like I said, the only two lenses that I didn't bring out here, because I've got, you know, way too, I brought out too many lenses, is the Voigtlander 58mm f1.4 Nocturne, which is unbelievable, perfect portraiture lens on this camera, and the 70 to 200 2.8. Obviously, here in the telephotos and the Tamron, run, I have some overlap, so it's up to you to make a choice as far as what your budget. Pretty cheap, slightly expensive, well, it, actually, this is an incredibly cheap lens for what it is, but I mean, this is $1,400, the uh, 200 to 500 millimeter uh, f5.6 uh, Nikkor. Like I said, the only DX uh, crop sensor lenses that can be recommended, and I've used them all, forget about the rest of them, to hell with the rest of them. 
12 to 24 f4, 10.5 millimeter fisheye, 35 millimeter 1.8 g, and the 17 to 55 2.8, which is a perfect wedding lens, portraiture lens, perfect for everything really. I mean, it's a big old honking heavy lens, and you would not want to buy it new because new is $1,500, and that lens has been around for many years, and you can grab them all day long for 600 bucks. The lens that you're an idiot to buy, regardless of whether you're on a full frame uh, sensor, a Nikon, or a DX uh, Nikon, is a 60mm 2.8 to D series or pre D. Doesn't matter if it's D or pre D, they're both the same damn thing. This lens is made in Japan, it's impeccable quality, it's exquisite quality. The Nikon's probably going to stop making this lens soon because it's too expensive to make. But there are a lot of used ones out there, especially in Japan on eBay. I got three of these lenses, and I wouldn't sell a damn one of them. Why do you got three of them? Because I know Nikon's going to stop making this lens soon. I've got a hardcore feeling, but it's just, this lens is too expensive to make. And, here we go. The 24mm 1.8G Nikkor, which is an equivalent of a 35, basically, on a DX crop body. Not a cheap lens, though. 800 bucks. It just came out. It's exquisite. It's silk, sex, and sugar. It's perfection. Perfect prime, and also not cheap, but absolutely lovely. Not fast autofocus, but you're not going to be using it for sports action or wildlife. And that is the Tamron 45mm. The 35mm is also a valid choice, but I would rather have the 45 over the 35 for several valid reasons, as that makes this lens more valid, more intelligent of a choice between using on a full-frame uh, sensor uh, body and a crop sensor body. This is a full-frame lens. But the 45 versus the 35 is more valid has more uh, intelligent premise of uh, broad spectrum use between a crop sensor and full frame bodies, which is why I chose the 45mm instead of the 35mm Tamron. I've t tried both, and both are exactly the same output, except one's a 45 and one's a 35. So that's it. That's a pile of expensive lenses here. And uh, thank you for watching. If you like this video, you can drop me a buck or two, or go tell me to jump off a cliff, or whatever tickles your pickle and makes you happy, okay? Bye.